Hi, Miss Okamachi. I apologize for the screen. I had to record it on my phone because my computer does not seem to be working. So I'm going to be reading off of my computer the notes that I typed up, but this is my book talk. I read the book called Cinderella and My Daughter by Peggy Ornstein. It's nonfiction. Um, the write author writes about how a girl is how girls are raised in the society to be princesses when in real life nothing seems to be like that. Girls are described as dolls and need to be and love the color pink. That is the main idea about this book. Actually, like when you were looking at it, it's sparkly and pink, which is kind of funny because that's everything that the author is against. So their girls are characterized by the moment they are born to grow up being quote a girly girl. Um, the author begins by saying how she never wants to have a daughter because of how complicated little girls are growing up. But after her first child, she makes it a rule to never force a princess dress onto her daughter. Her daughter's favorite cartoon character before going to school was Thomas the Tank Engine, which is a stereotypical little boy's favorite toy. But as soon as she got to school, it's not, she realizes that the home is not what forces this ideal about being a girl on it, but school and growing up with other girls. And that the idea that pink is every little girl's favorite color. And so to avoid being the weird one, girls revert back to this, I want to be a princess stage. The author really gets... The author really gets into it when she visits to Disney's prince president of marketing, Andy Mooney. He says, like, what's wrong with Cinderella? Like, every little girl loves Cinderella because princesses are pretty and nice and pink, and that's just how everyone wants to be. And, but the side of that is that Disney makes millions of dollars every year on just princess costumes because that's what every girl wants to be. He also starts to talk about how if you ever look at, like, a symbol or like a book where all the princesses are on it, they are never looking at each other. They're always looking off in different directions. Kind of going back to what the author states as being like, princesses never want to be seen as like lesser. They have to be equal to each other, which is another ideal that the author is very much against. But um, she really gets into the hypothetical question by examining this idea that like, what's wrong with Cinderella with college girls? So these young women are exposed to a series of tests and surveys based on math and science questions that they all originally got between 100% or close to it, like really intelligent women. But then she did the same test but had the girls read magazines first. Half of them read magazines with simple home ec things and like toothpaste, really just like boring magazines that wouldn't really anyone think of different of. The other half of the girls read magazines with women in them being characterized as beautiful and in bathing suits and articles about how to make yourself more beautiful and appealing to men. And then she did the same tests over. And of course, the girls that read the ones about toothpaste and home ec did much better the second time than the girls who read magazines about being more beautiful. Um, the author says that this is because the girls who are exposed to the more sexy magazines become more anxious and nervous about their own body image and can't even focus on schoolwork. I think this was a huge impact on me because when I think about it, like I read all these magazines a lot and I get them in the mail and like Allure and Vogue and I never really think about it affecting my schoolwork and my personal image. It's just kind of like a magazine to me, but it, it really does. Um, the author says in the beginning that she was never treated like a princess and was happy because she grew up with better ideals about being a woman, which I feel like makes this book very biased. Um, I think that it's her more biased, jealous side coming out in this book because she's writing it as a cause to like tell these mothers, like, don't raise your daughter like this, like, they will end up bad. But I think it's that small percentage of girls who maybe end up bad and it's like a lurking variable in the situation because thinking about to me and growing up I I was the little princess I always wanted to be Cinderella my parents raised me how I wanted to be raised or so I thought that's how I wanted to be raised because I had the pink room the dresses the PJs the plastic heels that I would wear around and I never really thought any of the wiser um so I think again that it was maybe the author thinks that she wasn't raised like a little girl, so she is biased about other little girls being raised, but then again, it might just be that I'm biased because she has the facts to back it up that when girls are raised with higher expectations, they are more likely to be depressed and suicidal and have more mental 
problems and are going to have eating disorders when they're raised like this. And she also gets into the masculinity of it, how little boys are expected to love digging and tools and be a man by the time they're two. And she doesn't talk about it that much, but I think that that was also important that it wasn't only just about the girls. Um... Again, like, that's really what affected me in this book, and I think it was really interesting, but not super fan, because I feel like she, it was targeted towards everything that she would hate me if she saw how I was raised, because I have pictures of me in a princess dress. But I did enjoy it, and I would recommend it to maybe moms who are having a struggle raising their daughters, or have, like, raised one daughter and, like, wants to have a different daughter and do it differently, maybe, I don't know, like not a mother, but I told my mom about it and she's really interested in reading it. So that's my book talk. Thanks Ms. Okamachi. See you in class.